Well, thanks, then, thanks, Nick, for for the intro. And again, thanks a lot, Zen Li. Uh, I mean, the setup is, is amazing. So we have the the chance to ask uh, Dan to welcome him yeah. uh, right now at your place. And uh, well, we will go like straight to the the interview. So the idea it's uh, we'll have a, a like a small chat. Uh, there is like different question I w I would like to ask to, to Dan. Obviously, I'm, I'm quite honored to be here talking with him. And uh, I will give you the, the the opportunity or the chance or just like the occasion to to talk and ask any question you have in mind to Dan about obviously dribble uh, his dribble experience uh, and adventure but also like everything will be uh, like covering tonight so uh, they will have time during which you can like uh, raise your hand and, uh, and ask any question but don't mind to interrupt us and if you anything pop up in your mind you just ask us any any question so yeah. basically what we will be doing uh, Dan and uh, and with you it's uh, we will first cover uh, the history, like the background of Dan, just to know more about how we end up like being a, a designer. And uh, then we will switch to his adventure, uh, dribble adventure, uh, from the inception to uh, what's going to happen next year when they will celebrate uh, the 10 years anniversary. And uh, we will end up with some thoughts, so it will be probably the most interesting part for, for all of you about design, uh, what Dan is thinking about like the new trend and uh, what's going on uh, currently in the design uh, area. Um, I think we should go right now. Yeah, we should do it. <laughs> we I should do it. it. I really appreciate the basketball floating. <laughs> yeah. So whoever did this, this is awesome. Yeah. yeah. It's this nice guy work. and uh, this year. So nice it's, work. I yeah. love it. I love it. Excellent. Um, I will just do like a quick intro about you, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, well, you are the co-founder and designer of Dribble. Well, everyone know that. Uh, you also are the founder of uh, Simple Bits, uh, which is like a design studio, a blog, uh, in which you share like all your idea, all your project and, and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, you are also like a, a, a co-founder of Coked. Uh, yeah, like a right. wine aficionados yeah. app, a kind yeah, like Vivino. Or maybe you will tell us more yeah, yeah. about yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, and uh, you are currently working on a new project called Adventure. So yes. I think we will probably have time to talk about that too. Yeah, uh, so you you like a long time advocate of a uh, standard based web design. You are a keynote speaker. You were at .css uh, this afternoon um, doing a talk. Uh, you work at several like big companies like uh, YouTube, Microsoft, uh, Google, MTV, ESPN, and so on and so on. The list is, is pretty amazing. So I hope we'll have time to cover that up. Uh, you also write books. I don't know. You find all the time to do that. Actually, <laughs> you, you wrote five books. So I don't know who, by raising hands, who actually write some books of them. No, okay, I and, uh, just okay. Yeah, well, well you get I, a prize. <laughs> Um, and I learned that you are right now living in Salem, uh, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. So it's like north of, uh, of Boston. Uh, just maybe as a starter, are you from here? Are you from the area or you moved to, to Salem? Oh, oh, I was born in Massachusetts and then okay. grew up in Vermont, actually. Yeah. Um, and uh, Verdemont, Verdemont is uh, Green Mountains in French. So anyway, there's a French connection there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and then grew up and lived in the Boston area for for uh, the last, you know, 25 years or whatever. So okay. New England has been home okay, uh, cool. all along. So, yeah. yeah. And uh, I also learned that you have two kids. Uh, last yes. week was Halloween. I yeah. guess in Salem is quite like oh, it's big. Crazy. Uh, I don't know, you know, probably the witch's like story. Or yeah. Which, right. Th there is anything well, special at Halloween. Well, it's funny because, uh, so uh, Salem in 1692, apparently witches were hung. Yeah. Uh, nine of them, and uh, <laughs> and now it's become this. It's turned Salem into this Halloween capital of the U.S., and that's where everyone goes in October, and it's like a tourist thing. Okay. Uh, but I real I realize like in Europe here. I mean, I think that happened a lot. You know, yeah. <laughs> they're like uh, I don't know how many witches were burned or hung. <laughs> I know it's many more than many nine. More. That we did. so for for whatever reason, it's super famous in the U.S., even though it's probably not. Particularly, uh, anyway, okay. I could go <laughs> yeah. on and on about yeah. the witch, witchcraft. If you... Okay, but yeah, we, we should <laughs> switch to something yeah. like more like yeah. professional. Yes. Um, uh, I would like to know more about your your background. Uh, 
where and what did you study? Uh, how do you end up like being a, a designer? Can you tell us yeah, more about yeah. it? Yeah, well, it's interesting because I uh, I was a musician. Uh, I mean, I still play, but um, that's all I wanted to do was play music when I was younger. And you know, from the age of eight onward, really, um, played drums and eventually moved to guitar and, uh, and other things. But um, that was the focus um, throughout my you know high school age and. And then I went. I did go to. I, go, I went to college, Emerson College in Boston, for a year. They had an audio program there, and I thought I could link the two. <laughs> and I, I left. I dropped out, um, and did a, a one-year uh, school for music recording specifically, um, and then left that and, and uh, thought I'd work in music studios or whatever, and, and realized that the hours are terrible and I can't stay up past you know midnight without. Uh, so. So anyway, all this happened right when the web was really just starting to, to gain momentum. And I had a, um, had a really bad job at a record label called Rounder Records in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And uh, it, it was a warehouse job for minimum wage. Uh, it was like $5 an hour. I think. And I, I worked my way up to a desk that had... Windows 3.1 <laughs> machine. Anybody, anybody use Windows 3.1 in here? Hey, all right. Hey, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's more than I, I figured. It. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, and it was connected to the to the internet, and I because okay. I couldn't afford it at home. But I was like amazed. And uh, a friend of mine, I was in a band, and a friend made us a website, and I could kind of watch how he did it, and I was just. I was just bitten. I just I wanted to uh, to learn everything about that, and it was for me. It was like a way of being creative um, you know. by myself at home, and um, I just I just fell in love with the web and just wanted to learn everything I, I could about it. But at this time, did you were you thinking about like a potential career in this area? Or not at all. It was just like a right. past time and a bit. Yeah, I mean, uh, maybe not initially, but pretty quickly, I realized I have. I'm not going to be a rock star, um, <laughs> and I probably I'm not going to go on tour with somebody or whatever. And I, I need to make money. I was like getting I was about to get married, and I um, and yeah, I mean honestly, like there was so much happening uh, with with the web, and there were so many opportunities, um, jobs, and I I was starting at ground zero, and I didn't know anything about. It. So you learn like. Design by yourself, or, or do yeah. you end up like yeah. like starting your designer career? Yeah, that's the beginning of it. Well, it's it's funny because I, throughout my whole childhood, I, I was interested in design, yeah. and it was all a lot of it was through interests I had, like skateboarding. You know, when I was younger, and I loved like the branding of skateboards and stickers and yeah. t-shirts, and, t-shirts and like, and I and I. I didn't think about creating it myself because I, I thought only certain people could do that, right? I, I didn't know it was possible for me to even do that. Um, and then it was like, you know, music, packaging, and, you know, making seven inch records with the bands I was in and the, the, the artwork that went into that. I was really into that. Um, and it wasn't until the web that kind of like it, it pulled all these things together and it kind of made me realize, oh, I can. This is how this stuff's made. I can I can do this as well, or even making web pages. To me, yeah. it was like creating something like a record cover mm -hmm. that the whole world could see, though, and not just you know five people at a dingy club, or whatever. <laughs> so it it did take the web to me for me to realize that I was a designer all along. I just didn't okay. really yeah, realize. The spark it. Or the flame. Yeah, it was. It was like the the, the big bang for me there, okay. and. Um, but uh, so I thank the web for for, yeah, for doing that. that. Yeah, because <laughs> I remember I looked. I would notice fonts and things when I was a kid, and um, I just didn't know what. I, unfortunately, I didn't have someone or something to shake me and say, "Look, this is it's, design. Yeah. Like, this is like a thing you can or do." Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it took it took a while. I was a late late bloomer with design. But. Okay. And so, what is the the link between this like s beginning of thoughts about like starting or starting to to design to uh, working for the biggest tech companies 
uh, all the one I said on YouTube, Microsoft, uh, MTV, SPN, uh, Evan Blogger, Fast Company. Well, the list is so so long. So, yeah. what is the, the the link between you starting to feel like a designer, or acting, or being a designer, yeah. and like real work to these companies? That's a great question. I I think it there's a couple different things, but the main thing for me was the web standards sort of movement back in early 2000s, right? Okay. Um, and that's when we started to be able to use CSS to build websites. Um, and I, I feel like I was in the right place at the right time where there was a great community, uh, and there still is, of course, but there was a, a great tight-knit small community of people that would blog about how they built websites with standards and CSS. And I got just in uh, immersed in that community and and shared my own my own thoughts on it on blog, literally blogging yeah. kind of I owe, <laughs> I owe so much to where I'm at from just sharing sharing what I was learning as I was doing it and um, and writing and getting good at writing you know just I dropped out of school so I, I didn't know what I was doing um, I still don't really. <laughs> I really don't. So, I, but um, it was something like natural. You just like yeah. learn and improve your yourself and your skills. And uh, I think I like to. I love learning new things, and and I love like sort of documenting that process okay. and and sharing and sharing it. And I think that that's what got me noticed in that community is mm -hmm. just the fact that I was sharing this stuff. And it is, I mentioned this in the talk earlier today, is, is that, you know, it didn't, it took me a while to realize you don't have to be an expert to share something on a particular topic. Um, even if you're, you're learning it yourself, I think mm -hmm. it's actually a great time to, to sort of share your journey of how you're, yeah. of how you're learning. Um, and that really opened up a lot of doors for me. It, it, it got me, you know, speaking at the conferences, which I, I didn't want to do really, to be honest. I don't like flying or talking in front okay. of people, so we put those two things together and. Uh, but you are, it, you are no. But yeah, okay, now it's fine. Uh, it's yeah, 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 no, it's fine. fine. Don't worry. Yeah. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but what make you? What was the like the, the the thing in your head? You say, okay, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. It's uh, like oh, okay, uh, someone asked me to to talk at the conference, or yeah. I have this potential contract with uh, I don't know YouTube. Okay, go for it. Yeah, I mean. It was this sort of momentum for me. I, 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 I just, there were so many companies then that were just getting into web standards and, and their teams were, were still building sites with tables and okay. spacer gifts. Yeah. And, uh, hopefully. Who, who, who created a website with tables before? Who? Yeah, so a fair amount of you, right. So um, in some ways it was easier back then, I think. But, um, but so there, were, there was a ton of, of room for freelancers like myself that would, could come in and help them transfer to a better way, yeah. which is you know CSS. Yeah. Um, but I, I feel like that that was a very iterative process, you know, like blogging, uh, getting asked to speak. Mm -hmm. you know, oh, I work at ESPN. Can you redesign this? Okay, and then it's sort of like this this trajectory of building on the last thing that I did and, 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 keep, and keep going that way. And, and really documenting all along the way okay. uh, was really important. I think it's... Do you think it was key to yeah. your, your success at this time, like building your, your career like step by step? Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. And, and now it's, you know, it's easier now with social media. There's, other, there's so many other ways to share yeah. what you're doing, make it easier to share what you're doing um, that everybody should be doing. I think, you know. Okay. Yeah. And from this past, you, you were um, a designer, a freelance designer at this time. So yes. Um, yep. At some point, uh, were you thinking about like, wow, I want a full-time uh, contract? If, let's say for I don't know, like ESPN, like okay, I want to settle. Uh, we're about to get married, or you were married at this yeah, time. So, right. like, you know, to have this uh, income, like regular income, to have this uh, like stability, and uh, yeah. did you did it cross your mind or not at all? It didn't. It's funny because I, uh, I didn't choose to be freelancer either. It was like I got laid off from. Uh, I was at Fast Company magazine and I was doing their web stuff, and they moved to New York, and I didn't want to move to New York, so so I just I left and, and started getting a few 
freelance jobs, and then suddenly six months later, I'm like, well, wait, well, I've been paying the bills, so I guess I guess I'll just keep doing this, and that's the way it happened uh, through that. So I, I don't, but after six years of that, um, I did want to sink my teeth into something that was longer lasting. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I, I felt like I was unemployable. <laughs> and, okay. and so I, uh, I tried to make small side projects, okay. you know, work and see what sticks. Get to build your own project. And yeah, stuff. yeah, and just be sort of in charge of, so okay. we could control the, the design of it. Okay, and yeah. what was your best or let's say the worst experience, like if you take the two sides of the scale, but yeah. which project you, you will always remember during this uh, freelance? Uh, well, the, the, yeah, the, the one I remember most is, uh, um, it was a site called Odeo. Any, anybody remember Odeo at all? Okay, <laughs> so Odeo was, um, you'll know the site that came out of Odeo. Uh, so Odeo was started by Evan Williams, who started Blogger, and, um, and it, was a, it was the podcasting, uh, like a podcasting uh, curation thing, or, you know, creation thing. And it was before the word podcasting even existed, I believe. Apple came out and created a podcasting category <laughs> of iTunes and basically made them, you know, irrelevant. Um, but the team that uh, was on Odeo is the team that created Twitter. Oh, um, so yeah. that's Twitter came out of the Odeo oh, project. Yeah. yeah. And um, what's really funny, a side story about that is I was. <coughs> I was doing the design of the CSS for Odeo, and I remember getting so like Jack Dorsey, the CEO of Twitter, was the intern I think for Odeo, which is really really funny. Uh, um, but he, uh, I, I got an email from one of the guys there, and I and that said, "Yeah, we're, you know, Odeo is probably not going to work out anymore, but we have this new thing called TWTTR, and you know, do you want to? Do you can you design it?" You know, and then I was like, ah, I don't have time. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, Jesus, yeah. <laughs> right? Because uh, I, I didn't know. I, I looked. I saw it, and I didn't know what it was. And yeah. Had this you bird, and it was like weird yeah. type bubble letter type thing, and you didn't realize at this time no. like the potential of. Uh, no, I, I didn't. Mean, maybe anyone does. Do I, probably know? not. Probably not. And it, and it's one of those things that. I, it taught me I mean, a few things. Well, well, I'm not bitter about it all, but like it's yeah. funny. But uh, it did teach me that, you know, you're working on a particular project. Um, maybe you know, hopefully you get along with them. Maybe you don't necessarily, mm -hmm. but you never know what's going to happen next, and you never know what these people you're working with they might go on to create something completely different and want to hire you back. Or it just it, it reminded me that, you know, being a good person yeah. <laughs> as much as possible, I like, okay. can can leave those doors open hopefully for future stuff. You never know who you're gonna bump into again, I guess. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um I think we are like slowly going to switch to your dribble adventure because I think sure. it's one of the main topic of, the, of this evening tonight. Sure. But before we do that, um, I have a last question. Uh, can you tell us more about Cocked? What was this? this Cocked. Oh, yeah, I'd love to. I mean, French, French people love wine. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I'm looking for Vivino is getting like wine. so famous around the world. Yeah. I think it's the, one of the top, maybe the top platform at the moment for like wine uh, discovery <laughs> and, and so on. So Cocked was, what was what yeah, this project? it was a weird project, yeah. and, that, and that was another one of those like side projects that I was like, I don't know, I probably had too much wine one night and thought, uh, <laughs> like, and I don't know much about wine. I like it, and yeah. I, and I um, but I'm not a, I don't know the, the science behind it or anything. But anyway, I thought it would be nice to get recommendations from friends about what they're drinking and um, you know, social socialify everything, right? Yeah. Um, at the time, I mean, this was a long time ago. So, um, so you know, I made a T-shirt, which you always do first when you start a product. Make a T-shirt, um, get people excited about it, and um, uh, you start know, working on the product. And start and then start working on the product, and <laughs> and it was a weird project because I ended up partnering with someone who did the Rails development for it, and I did the design, and we were just the two of us. Um, and it, and it, 
I mean, people were using it. Mm -hmm. It had a lot of potential. It, it, it went through a, uh, a lot of strange acquisition meetings because it was it was a wine site, and I was, you know, we didn't know a ton about it other than that we, we liked to, to drink it. So, um, so you know, CNET brought us out to San Francisco. This is so long time ago, so I'd never been to San Francisco. They brought us out there. Okay. Um, hey, let's let's. Uh, we want to we want to acquire it, or we want basically we want you to work on our version of this, yeah. you know, whatever. So there was a lot of lessons learned in that, in that that was a distraction. It totally took the steam out of our, you know, what we were doing. Yeah. Um, a lot. I, le I learned a lot about, you know, that part of the business, I suppose. Um, we eventually sold it to uh, Gary Vaynerchuk. You know, I don't know. Oh. Anybody know who? Yeah, yeah sure. Right? Yeah. Who has yeah. since become, you know, a, a motivational speaker. Yeah. Like high level, right? He started because he owned his family owned a yes. wine store. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, it was just crazy. Uh, unfortunately, he, he didn't, it's dead now. Okay. He didn't keep it going. Okay. Um, because he's now he's writing books and like, yeah, and he's, he's like his a own star. Like media company. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, Gork had a, a short life. Okay. But I feel like actually it's funny now. I, I feel like I wish it was here yeah. because I, yeah. I would use it. Yeah. Um, especially on this trip. Yeah. So if you don't know the app, you, you have to download <laughs> Vivino, which is like oh, exactly Vivino, right. the, so the same concept. Same thing. thing? Okay. Yeah, same thing. That's, that makes sense. There's okay. probably others out there. Does yeah. it? Does it? When you take a picture of the, you can the scan thing, the, yeah. that's what we wanted to yeah. do. And you have the social, yeah, the social uh, proof, and you have all right. the, like, the, the comments and the rating and so on. So yeah, yeah exactly we're too mean. early. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for all this information. Maybe before yeah. we switch to Dribble, uh, to talk more and deep dive more into this topic, anyone has a question? Do you want to know more about Dan, uh, his background and, and so on? Are we good? Okay, so let's go for the, the shot. Let's yeah, yeah, right, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's so take the shot. let's take the shot. Uh, well, Dribble, I think I don't have to say much more about this. Uh, you and um, Rich Tonnet. Yes, Rich right? Tonnet. Yeah, yeah. Rich Tonnet. Yeah. You conceived Dribble like nearly a decade ago. It was, yeah. I wrote it back, yeah. it's uh, 9th of July. 2009. Hey, right. A long time ago. Yeah. Your, uh, research. Though. Long time ago. Yeah, so you, next you, summer will be 10 years. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So a big, big milestone. Yeah. Uh, first, uh, first of all, uh, how did you meet with Rich? Well, what was is, the connection with This is with funny. So Rich, Rich and I both live in Salem. Okay. We have kids around the same age, and I could see his back door from my front door. Okay. So you did Halloween together. We were neighbors. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 and we just happened to know each other through our kids. Okay. Um, he happened to, to be a, a Rails developer, a very good one, good programmer, product designer, and then I was a designer. So we kind of, we knew each other through our kids and through our neighborhood first, uh -huh. and then started, uh, we, we shared an office a couple days a week. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think that's when the, the idea for Dribble emerged, and I, I remember making a t-shirt <laughs> um, t-shirt first t -shirt then first absolutely okay, it's, I think it's a good takeaway for it, tonight <laughs> it really is That's, it was a takeaway for the dot CSS talk to me, so okay. now I'm like repeating it. <laughs> but um, but uh, you know we we, I just I, I wanted to see what my friends were working on and at the time this is 10 years ago so Twitter was around but it wasn't that, that big or that popular it, it yeah it wasn't as big it wasn't, yeah. and, and uh, you know, Instagram wasn't Flickr was around that okay. was the thing we could kind of point to. Yeah. But um, I wanted to see what people were working on. Like, I wish I could look over the shoulder of of people that I admired and people I would see only at conferences. Like, what are you working? That would be the first thing I would ask them. Like, what are you working on right now? So I thought, hey, it would be cool if there was a site to do this, and you could take a little snippet of what you're doing, a uh, screenshot, and and show what you're doing. And yeah, like a way to stay in touch with all the designer from your community, but yeah. Without having time to spend like the proper like meeting one in one with everyone. So. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And because oftentimes the portfolio was out of date. You yeah. know, it was like mm -hmm. that always took time to update it. And it wasn't. It wasn't showing like, you know, what are you doing now? Like, what? Are you, what's your latest thing that you're doing? Um, so that was the that was the idea. And I, you know, I turned to Rich and it's like, 
let's do this. And he's like, yeah, okay, I'll set up a Rails app and we'll, we'll start building it. No business plan or, yeah, or sure. any plan, really. I mean, it was, it was a side project. Um, for fun? Or you were not, yeah, like thinking fun. about, okay, we can do business later, but don't, we don't care I don't even too think, much. You know, it's funny. Initially, I don't even think we thought about business. I mean, I, mean, I guess, the, of Maybe course, later, a little, yeah, later on. But, yeah. but initially, it was just we wanted to... We wanted to build something together, uh -huh. and that was that. That kind of won as the idea, <laughs> and um, and the name. You know, there we had three Bs because triple with two Bs. dot com was taken, so oh. we just added a B. <laughs> you know, that's what you do. It's, okay. it's okay. easy to do that. So, so that's, no link with like the, the the dribble like many times. So you say, okay, we should put like as much B as we can. Or? Yeah, well, I always thought like. When you draw it, this is why the logo is cursive, but I, yeah. I feel like I was kind of inspired by the Kleenex. I don't know if they have them here in, in yeah, France, the Kleenex box. The, the Kleenex <laughs> logo is like, yep. is cursive and it's like clean. You know, there's a lot of loops and it looks cool. And I, I thought was, we were drawing dribble and cursive and, yeah. and I'm like, you can, you can draw a lot of bees and it still looks like the word. You yeah. just don't even, you kind of ignore the loops yeah. after a while. Uh -huh. So... That, and I was like, this works, this works great. We have to do it in cursive, though. Um, and, uh, yeah, so anyway, we... we and why, we maybe, built, why Dribbble? What, oh, what was the well, name? Was you know, it was your it, idea or Rich idea? It, like, it, it was Because there is but, all the link with basketball. Uh, yeah, team, yeah, that's right. So, so it was, I came up with a name, and because and, um, the idea was bounce ideas off of each other, yeah. and, and also the double meaning of, like, leak your work. Mm -hmm. So, Dribble, like... Like okay. you know, like I could dribble here, uh, but, um, or leak. yeah, it's kind of kind of a weird one. But so there's two, there's kind of two meanings there. Um, but the basketball made sense to sort of, and then you know, all of a sudden we have, oh wow, we can use all this <coughs> terminology. I mean, sure. we probably went too far, but <laughs> but you know, because yeah, people, if you, if you hate yeah. basketball, you're probably yeah. not going to like. Uh, it, but but um, there's there's certain terminology that just kind of works yeah. with with. Uh, With the app, but that, that came later. And so, what what was the like your your job or your mission at the, at the time during like the first moment you were so yeah. on your in your house or in this office, like walking under the first version of Dribble? What were you exactly doing? Uh, were you in charge of design and enrich just like product uh, like engineering, or, or or did it work? Yeah, I mean that's that's pretty much it. I think. Um, We, we wore all the hats that there were yeah. at that time. I, yeah, I handled all the front end and, and design and, and we split on everything else. And, and um, you know, I, I, it was interesting because I feel like the first, we, we, we chose 50 to 100 people to mm -hmm. invite to the site initially. Yeah. And these were people that either knew or admired or, you know, I really, thought they were great designers and I selfishly just wanted to see what they would upload yeah. <laughs> and what they were working on. So we sent them a t-shirt yeah. and a handwritten code to get into the beta and, uh, oh. and mailed it and okay. physically mailed it. And I feel like that t-shirt guilted them into actually checking it out yeah. and saying, oh, that's great. You know, yeah, it's fun. Good luck. You know, yeah. So, um, and then what happened was these are very accomplished visual designers that we sent these to and they were the first people to upload uh, work to the site and, and immediately it was like oh this is this is really compelling like seeing all this being able to like quickly see what people are doing visually like yeah. and easily digest that quickly was like wow okay this is this is what this is what we should chase here because uh -huh. um, we weren't sure if people would just Well, what am I working on? Well, I'm writing an email. So here's like a little piece of the email, which would be terrible. Um, so that, I feel like that initial group of people that we chose to invite was so crucial to setting the tone of what this, the site would be and the community would be. And um, like, so thinking back to, to the building this earliest day, so it was just, I mean, it was just, it was in a way to share the work, what we were currently doing. Yep. Nowadays, it's, it's switched, so I'm going a bit further in the history of Dribbble. Uh, I think nowadays it's more like a, um, a portfolio uh, management, like it's yeah. going to be some some like nicest piece of design you're working on. Yeah. Uh, upon you, what drove this change? From like, I just pushed like 
dirty design, what what is right. unfinished, to something like really clean and sharp, something I want yeah. to just as a portfolio. Yeah, I think it was um, just observing how people were using the site, and I think you know initially it was it was probably meant to be more casual or you know not un unfinished, but that's not the way people use it as a whole. Mm -hmm. They they were putting their best foot forward, yeah. and pretty quickly it, it was it was we realized that this is this is how people are using it, and we kind of just observed and would pave the cow paths, as they say, right? Just mm -hmm. watching community use the site and then try to adapt to those with UI or whatever that that helps helps uh, helps that so it really was the community that drove that um, that's not to say that people don't still share unfinished things I think it's one of those challenges that we have the team has now is to because that stuff's really interesting right we want to get more of that process in in place because that's fascinating and it yeah. tells the story better mm -hmm. so and that's something that the team's working on i mean they've been working on it but okay um so we're exploring different ideas of how to do that okay yeah. well to, to keep this like basic idea of sharing work in progress and not just yeah like, not just the, sh the shiny finished yeah. product exactly okay. yeah. I, I have another question but maybe yeah. someone in the audience will will ask because there, there is like an ongoing debate uh, with yeah. the art versus the design but i will sure, keep it sure. for later yeah yeah absolutely. um there is something uh, also, like really fascinating about uh, the growth uh, at Dribble, it's it was always. I think it still is. I'm not sure. You will correct me, but it's an invite-only um, like platform. Uh, it is, yeah. And yeah. well, many companies are doing that at the early times. So they, they just like invite the, the beta tester or even alpha tester. And uh, in the future, when they, they they're trying to reach growth, they just like open the right. open the door and let everyone uh, come in. So yeah. why did you? choose this idea i mean understand at the beginning but why you keep yeah. this uh, this thing and um what does strategy behind exactly yeah, yeah good, question. Of, of growth. good question because that was it was interesting some uh at the very beginning since it was just two people rich and i building yeah. it and really we had full-time jobs at the same time so um the init the invitation uh gate was there just because we couldn't handle we, it was getting it was getting a lot of attention, yep. which was great. It was a good problem to have, but at the same time, we knew we couldn't uh, let anybody upload anything because you well, we'd have our Amazon bill. Yeah, yeah <laughs> like just like support. You know, we had to do a, a regular job okay. at the same time. So we thought, okay, well, let's, let's just throttle this and have an invitation system based on if you're already on the site, we'll give invitations to those people, and they can invite and so on and so on. Um, the, 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 the nice byproduct of that was that it also, because of the scarcity of the invites, it made people sort of covet them and, and really um, think hard about who should get an invitation. Mm -hmm. And that helped the quality of the site, you know, immensely. But that, was, that wasn't the initial goal, was to create an, an exclusive club or anything. It yeah. was more... For you to protect, like, to protect yeah. you against this like huge growth. Yeah, like, exactly. So that we couldn't handle, and then that would probably kill the business. You know, if, it wouldn't be a. You start seeing a bunch of cat gifts up there or something, and then that would make <laughs> make okay. it not such a great place to uh, to hang out in. But or maybe okay. maybe it is actually. No. I probably would hang out there. <laughs> um, and so what? Well, when did the does this did the switch happen from you being like a like a side side project uh, co-founder to yeah. like a full time uh, co-founder uh, Yeah, I mean it took a while. It, honestly, like we we took it very slow, yeah. and that's probably weird to hear or, or against a lot of other like business. common pattern or at the moment like yeah. everything need to be like really fast, like you yeah. shift fast, you grow fast. Exactly, exactly, and that was that's it was sort of the anti. San Francisco model yeah. of like we're just going to take it slow because we, a we don't want to screw this up. I mean, I, I think initially, right off the bat, there was a very vibrant community that we really cared about, and we still do. And I think that's that's the core of what it is. It's mm -hmm. the community, it's the people, and and we wanted to we wanted to protect those people and not 
screw it up. <laughs> you know? And I think that's really the goal going forward is like, we just don't want to mess this thing up. And it's really easy to mess up these yeah. things. Uh, uh, and I mean, we do occasionally slip up and there's things blow up and it seems like the end of the world on Twitter. And then, and then, and the, and then the next day, day it's fine. Yeah. You know? and this mm. is, actually, this is how the U S is currently operating. But, um, so, uh, <laughs> Um, but we, we could do it, France, I guess. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I hope so. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so so invitations. Yeah. Okay. Weren't. I, I I wish I could say like yeah, it was all a grand plan from the beginning. Like yeah. always do invitations, and, but it really was just for for scaling. Okay. You know. Got it. And um, you, you talk a little bit about uh, this like vibrant and uh, well engaged community. Uh, so yeah. she. It was driving the, the let's say, the product roadmap. It uh, involved a lot of like you thinking about what uh, gonna what needs yes. to be developed next. Yeah, yeah, for sure. There is also something interesting about the Dribble community. I think you like all aware. It's the uh, like the non-official meetup or the like yeah. uh, yep. savvy. I don't know if savvy is the right time, but the way that meetup are organized all around the world. But you are yeah. not really like managing it. I mean, it's right. not from your team like uh, launching this this meetup. So right. Right. can you? Just like uh, tell us more about this and the way it started to, to pop up all around. Yes, yeah, uh, like yeah. designer meetups. Yeah, it was amazing. I, I and it still amazes me that that happened. And it happened really early on. You know, we just like, hey, we want to we want to throw a meetup in you know Singapore or something. We're like, jeez, I don't even I don't even know where that is. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like, I kind of do, but um, <laughs> but it was incredible because they would they would be self uh, self organizing mm -hmm. and. I think to have a to have a community that, that cares that much about it, want to get together, um, is 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 amazing. We're super fortunate about that. So over over the years, we've tried to just foster that and you know give them give them a place to to advertise the meetup and we send them swag and all that stuff. And there's so much more we could do there. And I know that ten years in, it seems like we should have done more at this point. But we we really are focusing on. On growing those even more, yeah. and and, and uh, because they're, it's amazing that they happen. Uh, there's one in, I think it's Russia, so, um, Moscow that has you know a thousand people that show. And then it's like Whoa. a conference, it's, you yeah. know, like a full blown conference. Okay, and it's a dribble thing. I, mean, I don't. It's just bizarre that it happened. They sent us photos, so I guess it happened. But yeah. Um, <laughs> so you did not <laughs> see that like. Uh, Like Evan, in a bad way, it was for you. It was like okay, driving the, the growth of your company. So yeah, yeah. Well, company. that's a good point. Like, I guess you know you could have looked at it like, hey, wait, we control the brand. Why, yeah. why are you? Mm -hmm. Why are you uh, talking about us? Yeah, know? yeah. And we we never felt that way. It was more like, wow, we were flattered that yeah. that people were getting together. It's like, okay, well, what can we do? Like we're bootstrapped and we're we're a small team, but what can we do to help you? Mm -hmm. And Oftentimes it was like send us some shirts or so, you know, send us some, <laughs> yeah. send us some swag to give out, and so we started doing that, and and, uh, and then you know, um, give us a place to host the host the uh, the, the meetup pages and stuff like that. And, but there's so much more we could do. I think we need if we had people on the ground from the team that could go to more meetups mm -hmm. um, to help. Yeah. You know that would be amazing. And so we've started to do events called hang times mm -hmm. and. Uh, we do those twice a year now, and those are like legitimate events where we have speakers and get the whole team together and all that kind of thing. But but the meetups still happen. You know, yeah. they still they still self organize all around the place. Cool. Um, you talk. Uh, let's talk about maybe the, the team because uh, it's something also like unusual uh, from Dribble. It's the yeah. entire team is remote. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. From the beginning. Yeah, from the beginning. Yeah, uh, I guess. It, well, I guess it, when it was Rich and I, we had a we were it was at not sale. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, from the beginning. From yeah. the beginning, you yeah, yeah. out. And yeah. how many yeah. people at the moment are you? There's uh, there's like, like 50 people now. 50 people. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And uh, so, what was the like the thinking or the decision behind this? It was just like as you said uh, about the, the growth, like you want to to keep it simple and easy yeah. to to uh, to manage. Or uh, it was something behind that in terms of yeah. strategy. I, I think that. A couple things. I think one, we we didn't know what we were doing <laughs> in terms of like managing a company. Yeah. So that was one reason why things moved slowly for us. I think we were 
we like we we were kind of control freaks, but at the same time didn't really know how to grow, <laughs> and that's why it took us so long to you know to slow grow. Uh, I think in terms of the remote and stuff, it was it really was like we we uh, we rented an office. It's probably about as big as this room or the whole room for just the two of us, <laughs> thinking that we would hire you know, eventually hire some people and yeah. locally, and, and we just couldn't find people locally that that were into it. So. The first few hires were remote, and then you know, Rich and I realized um, that even though we worked in the same space, we would still we would still use Slack to communicate because then it's documented. It's just yeah. easier, even though we're sitting right near each other. We're, we're still we're still working remote in a way. Okay. Um, and, and you know, since that since then, I don't think I could ever go back to having to go to an office because I, I feel like the advantages of work-life balance and being able to, I don't know, not getting stressed out if I have to go to <coughs> my kid's doctor appointment, right? Yeah. Um, that, those kind of things just make it so trade-offs. If, if you start a new company today, I mean, you, you are about to, yeah. how you are doing it, yeah. um, you will do remote, like without a doubt. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I, there are certainly cons to it. Like, how yeah. many people work remote here? Like fully um, remote? Fully remote. Yeah, okay. So fair enough. Of, um, okay. So I don't, yeah, and I, I think I'm unemployable at this point so, to mm. actually go into an office, but I don't, I don't know. But okay. I've been spoiled. But. <laughs> and um, so being like fully remote, what is the like team organization? Uh, not only like the product team, but like global team, or do you, do you set up this? And uh, are you, because the first uh, meetup we organized was about uh, product squads. Organization. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, are you are you doing, or were you doing squad and you stopped? So, can you tell us more about this? Well, that's, it's that's interesting because this, I said fifty, but re really, like two two years ago, it was eight. You know, so it's it's grown oh. really rapidly um, <laughs> over the last couple of years. So, and it's very different. And my role has certainly changed throughout that as well. I, and I've stepped back from day-to-day -day things and, and concentrate on things like the, the, the uh, events that we do and podcast, and, um, which is, I, I feel real fortunate to be able to do that. But we, so our, when we were eight people, very much we were kind of one squad, you know? It was, yeah. Everybody knew what everyone else was doing. It was actually a wonderful amount of people to work with. And, like, Less than ten. Eight. Less yeah, than eight. ten. Yeah, because yeah, it's really like there's no, there's one meeting, you know. Like there's, yeah. there's not like, oh, are you in the marketing meeting and the design? like there was just one. I don't know. It was just yeah, like something humans, simple about yeah. it, you know. Like human size. It's yeah. Easy to handle and yeah, and and I kind of missed that to be <laughs> honest. But uh, so now it's you know it's very organized. We have uh, we're separated into business segments, like we have like a growth team and a retention team and a, you know, like there's like four or five different teams that each have a product designer or like a product manager, product designer, engineer, that kind of thing. And, oh. and, and so it's very, it's, I mean, compared to what it was like, it's very organized. Yeah. And, uh, but I think with that many people, you have to, you know, you have to have organization like that, especially with a remote team. Yeah. And what about the, the culture at Dribble? Because it's something like we can feel it uh, through the platform, the, the meetups we are attending or organizing, but yes. what about the culture inside the team at Dribble? Uh, is it easy to do? It's one of probably the pros slash cons of uh, a yeah. culture. So yeah. what, what about Dribble? Well, so that's one of the reasons we do these uh, twice a year conferences is we bring the whole team together. Mm -hmm. And that's crucial, right? I mean, I think for, you, you're not working together day to day, but getting together a couple times a year absolutely crucial to uh, to have the non work related bonds with people you know I think um, and I think as we grow it, it is a challenge um, uh, I think well I, I don't know if I answered your question there, but it was the, the culture in your team like uh, golf, how do you yeah. like in the list uh, the fact that you right. were remote, fully remote yeah fully remote yeah. well to be honest like we've I feel like the the team that's in place that's hiring has done a really really great job yep. at finding the right people that are going to fit in the culture, right? So, uh, and because we're remote, that's been a, an asset for us um, up to this point. Yep. Um, in fact, we have a we have someone coming on board. I don't think 
I don't think I can say it publicly, but uh, maybe I could just well, let's see how I can get where we get to the but make it still uh, relevant. But um, yeah, well, okay, yeah. So this person was hired by um, the person interviewed with us. Yeah. We loved him. Yeah, but he got an offer from a very large company, very uh, plaid company in uh, the Bay Area, um, and. Uh, and was going to go work there, yeah. and um, and then his his wife uh, got a job in Portland, and they don't do remote mm-hmm. at this plaid company, and um, so he came back to us, and, okay. and and that was sort of like a, in a way, it was a competitive advantage uh, for us, it's at least in that in that, in that uh, yeah, yeah. situation. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, <laughs> Well, I have a lot of other questions about Dribbble, but um, yeah. just one more, and then if you have any question, uh, we'll jump to, to you. Uh, as I said, you Dribbble is turning 10 next year. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's Next's pretty over. amazing. Yeah, and uh, so I'm what old. is the, uh, <laughs> in a way, maybe, but no, it's in the mind, I think. But yeah. what is the, like, the, the biggest like strategic challenge, or what is coming next at Dribble, what is the future of Dribble? Or do you see yeah. like the, the product evolving uh, in terms, I don't know, if design features, uh, the team uh, and everything else? What is like, can you give us some tips about what's going on? Yeah, next? yeah. Well, it's, it's all exciting because like I said, we've been hiring a ton this year yeah. and really kind of, there's going to be a lot of, a lot of things happening. I think, you know, one of, in a small way, like video, for instance, we're launching um, video support, which is which is great. So I'm making making gifs, painfully making gifs of things that move. You don't have to use gifs anymore. Um, and, and and that'll probably open up some other ways of sharing. Um, yeah. I mean, we started as 400 by 300. You know, that was the yeah. that was the canvas. And I think that was important initially because it leveled the playing field, kind of in a way. And it's like, what can you do in this? small space mm-hmm. as like screen sizes have changed obviously so much has happened in 10 years yep. with devices and screen sizes and um and maybe new video, technology motion, of, yeah yeah motion We're talk about vr it. And exactly. ai and all that uh-huh. so like the way we want to make sure that you're able to share those those types of uh, media yep. uh, just as easily as you could with a screenshot so that's a challenge for us and but but it's something that we're working on and uh, and something that we'll, we'll be rolling out uh, support for. Okay. Um, the other the other side, I mean, business wise, like Dribble has become a place to get work, right? And and that that was not intentional either at first, but it's, it just that's the way it happened. And that was we love that. We love that we're helping people get jobs. We're, help, we're helping connect people. Obviously, there's a business, uh, a nice business uh, model in there that's yeah, sure. intertwined in that, and that's another challenge we have to sort of make that process better, easier to connect people together, and um, and help us grow the company that way. Um, then there's a whole bunch of other little things like, you know, we've got a videographer on on the staff now, and we've got we're going to be putting more effort into um, creating content around the designers and. The focus is always the the artists yeah. and like shining a light on maybe people that are super talented but but maybe don't have a lot of followers but they, their their story is compelling we want to get okay. more of that out there um, so we'll be focusing on that too and then the other side is just growing the growing the community without ruining it yeah. <laughs> which is always yeah, the, the like biggest the right challenge balance, yeah, yeah it was the, the, our biggest challenge forever. Uh, because there's so many ways, I think I said this earlier, but there's so many ways to mess this up. Yeah, and sure. mm-hmm. not going to look we Okay, well. We haven't yet, but uh, maybe we have. Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Well, it's a lot. Okay, thanks for all this, uh, this yeah. info. And uh, maybe, okay, we can jump in uh, in the audience question. Anyone? Uh, do you want to know more about Dribble? Or... Yes, Nick? No, I'm just wondering if you still have time to design. Like, because uh, you seem to have, like, you're, you're saying you're trying to be involved, but, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that's a good question. I because that's what I really love, and I don't, I don't love. I'm a terrible manager, and I'm a terrible business person. I think I'm just awful. 
uh, but I love to make stuff, and I always, I always have. And uh, so the the little things are the things I'm involved in now with Dribble are are just things I can like the podcast and and, and designing logos and things that we need for the brand, but which is the parts that I love. And then, um, and that's one of the reasons I, I'm starting this new thing actually, where I'm, I needed an excuse to make physical things, design physical things like patches and shirts and shirts again, uh, <laughs> hats, it's a broken, broken record. But, uh, and, uh, so I created this brand to be able to do that. So really, keep my creative mind going, you know, because I'm not, I'm just not a good manager at all. I mean, it took me a long time to realize that, and it was kind of painful, to be honest. It's sort of like a, here's something I can't do, you know, and I think learning, like, what you're good at and what you enjoy doing is, is important, and sometimes it takes a long time to get there, but... Um, once you once you do figure it out and you're okay with tossing other things aside, it, 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 uh, everything gets a little easier. So. Maybe another question for them. No, okay. Um, I, I just have a one more. Um, like there is this uh, like pixel uh, count. Uh, on the, oh yeah, on the, on yeah. the platform you. Sure. I don't know how to pronounce it in English. It's a, I think it's like three seven billions pixels. I mean, almost. Yeah. I don't so know like if it is correct or trillion. It could be in the trillions. Trillion. Now. I think it's trillions. Now. Three yeah. trillions. Trillions. Uh, yeah. I was more interested in terms of product. What are the the metrics, the, the KPIs, the OKR uh, you are following with the team? Because this one is, let's say, a vanity or a fun metrics to yeah, follow for yeah, the, the community. Yeah. But for you internally, what what are you tracking? What oh, is okay. your Oh yeah, that's this, we get into some secret secret sauce things here. Uh, well, so that the, funny the, the pixel counted counter thing it still works. It's kind of funny. That, okay. So what, one of the first things we added, and it's kind of ridiculous too, because like <coughs> four hundred by three hundred, uh, you've got a certain number of pixels, sure. you know, each one. But then when we we retinize things so that you can upload eight hundred by six hundred, and that sort of doubles, you know, exponentially this number gets bigger. Yeah. Um, So now we allow even larger shots than that, and uh, and a video like so it gets kind of fuzzy. But that thing has remained, which I'm really happy about. I think I'm glad it's still there. It's just sort of funny and stupid, and people congratulate us randomly sometimes. Like, yeah, 1.5 trillion. Yeah. You guys did it. Yeah, <laughs> it's like yeah, yeah. we made it. You uh, can make a T-shirt with that number. Yes, <laughs> right. See? And um, so yeah, I don't know if you are able to to tell us more about oh, yeah, like the, the KPI so actually, on. things that actually matter. Yeah, um, yeah. So I'm th I just noticed there's a monkey hanging. From the yeah. Okay, yeah. it's really cool. Um, sorry. Uh, so, uh, I'm not trying to distract. Okay, next question. API. So we, uh, I mean, we, we track. There's a ton, and it's kind of crazy. Because I mean, the, the most important because for sure you are tracking almost the same as we all do. At sure, company, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm trying to think of like a. Is it like the number of like shots posted per day yeah, by a designer, sure. or sure. is it the number of like uh, designer? But it's uninvitedly, so maybe it's not like. Well, that, that's what complicates it a little bit, right? Yeah. So, like, growth for, like, anybody can sign up, but not everyone can upload. And yeah, sure. so that metric is interesting because, mm -hmm. you know, we want to grow, but we're, we're kind of cautiously doing that. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of, like, ones that are interesting that aren't the norm that everyone else yeah. is, is monitoring um, specific to, to Dribble. I mean, to be honest, like, we have... We have two people now on staff that only worry about this stuff. Now. So, like, that's why I don't even know. I don't even really know. They, okay. they're like uh, amazing. They're just taking all the data and 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 telling us crunch it for you, crunch, oh, crunch it, and run tests, and, nope. and it's kind of amazing. So, yeah, that didn't help anybody here. Yeah. Hire someone <laughs> smart that knows <laughs> how to crunch data. Okay, so we will stick to the, the yeah, pixel, yeah. Uh, pixel well, account. That, that one, yeah, that one's. Um, Okay, if you don't have any question, we will switch to the third and uh, almost last part. Uh, are you still okay, guys? Yeah? yeah. 
It's okay, it's interesting enough for you, yeah. <laughs> okay, otherwise we can go straight to the pizza yeah, and the right, drinks. Right, right, that's true. Um, yeah, so the next part is uh, like, it's open. Uh, it's a totally open question. It's about your thought on the on product design. Yes. Um, it's a bit like uh, it's a it's a mess. I think there is like no special order. But first, um, what would be the, the best advice for a young designer, the, the one the, the the fresh designer like starting or still learning design uh, about to join startups or bigger groups? What is for you the, the main or the best advice you can give them? Yeah, with I, all your experience. You yeah, I would I would say uh, you know writing. Uh, which may sound odd, but um, I feel like writing and documenting like what your what your process is and what you're learning it certainly helped me immensely. It opened doors that yeah. I didn't know could be there. Um, and I, I feel like also writing is just the way we communicate as a team and, and the way we communicate in, in the interface. So like writing, I feel like the more writing you can do, the better. Okay. Um, and any support in particular, like a medium blog post or like yeah, blog post or yeah, just sharing however you can. I think okay. you know, back when I started, it was blogging. It was like yeah. that was the only way that we communicated as a community. Sure. Um, but that's the way I learned. I learned from all everyone else, and they mm -hmm. maybe learned from me as well. And I think that 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 is evergreen in terms of you know, yeah, put it on, put it, put it on medium. You don't have to be an expert in yeah. these things. To, to be able to write uh, your experience about a certain certain thing. So in, in that direction, you think like being part of the, the designer community, the, your local uh, designer community, or maybe the wider, like uh, all like worldwide, you think it's really important? Like someone who is not really like confident enough to share his work, uh, and do you think this person should do the the, the, the step to, to share his work? Even if it is not so good, in his opinion? Yeah, no, I think so. I think if you, I think even if it's, if you think the work is mediocre, I think if you're still learning, I think it's still valuable to, to, to explain that. Yeah. You know, and you could explain like, yeah, this is a, this is supposed to be a picture of a frog, and I know it doesn't look like a frog. What am I doing wrong? Or, you know, I don't know. That was a yeah. terrible example. But, you know, I should have used monkey, but like I, yeah. I think. Oh, but frog is French, is Oh yeah. Oh. The, the oh, what is it? Is English are calling us a frog. Oh, that's right. Yeah, See, yeah. it's even worse. I saw. I did not use that. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, my I'm God. You, you I don't know why do they? We have no extra slice normal. of pizza. It's okay. okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. But it's good. It's but good. What, I, what I mean? Let's take another. Yeah. What's the Monkey. <laughs> monkey. Yeah, monkey would be good. Uh, you know, like, I feel jeez. <laughs> get kicked out of here. Um, you were I feel like, I feel like uh, yeah, I think no matter what level you're at in yeah. your design learning, I, I think that sharing that, I feel like there's not, there shouldn't be this, hey, I'm, I'm just starting, so I have nothing I can offer to the world in terms of, um, my process or what I know, um, the earlier the better, yeah. I feel like. Because it really helped me. It, it's it's why my career went the way it did, and I feel fortunate for that. I think that's why I'm always suggesting, like, just keep your name, keep your name out there and your thoughts out there, and not, but sometimes the work can speak for itself, but yeah. don't, don't assume that, you know? Okay. And um, so nowadays, there are like more and more like designer-funded startups. So it's part of this process, like a new, I think, new d designer find the, the like the, 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 they are willing to create and not just like following the, the business uh, or the, the engineering team. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, right, right. So it's it's good because they are not like the, the uh, make it make it that beautiful. Uh, they are really like part of the product. They are core to the yes, product. Yes. Uh, what, in your opinion, triggered this like new waves and ways of uh, of thinking about the like new business? Why designer just take the the the, the, uh, the, the stick and say, okay, I want to go and I create my own company? Do you have any that's thoughts on that? Well, yeah. So, like, why are there more design design founders and yeah, yeah. And design also, is why, getting like so yeah. not so trendy, but like core to to any yeah, product. Yeah, yeah. They finally have a seat at the table, right? Exactly. I yeah. Think. Um, yeah. What did trigger that? That's a really interesting question. Um, I'm sure glad it did happen, but uh, um, I think, you know, I think people, eventually, people realize 
non-designers, I suppose, the value of what good design can bring to something. Yeah. And I think once that becomes apparent, it's like, okay, we need to invest in that. We need to bring that in. So I think it's one of those things that I think people learn, people either know it or they learn the hard way. Mm -hmm. uh, that they have to, they have to incorporate design at the beginning. Yeah. Oh, question. Yeah. Uh, do you have any uh, inspiration, like a product that you think uh, specifically triggered that? Uh, where we kind of yeah. like, we were all like, oh, actually, right, really like a better design. Well, oh, that's a good question. Um, I could, I mean, I could cop out and say Apple stuff, but I mean, <laughs> that's an easy one, I guess. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm thinking, oh, maybe the Dyson vacuum, right? Um, or the the air, there's one in the bathroom, go check it out. It's the air blade thing. Yeah. Right? Um, that, to me, like, that's. That's wonderful because it's it's like it's very unsexy to design a vacuum, right? But they did that and they made it function better. Not only function better, and but just the whole experience. Nice looking. And yeah, uh -huh. and I think that's happening across different. I have this toothbrush now. It's uh, Quip. Anybody use Quip? Just raise a hand. Raise your Quip. Always yeah. brushing his teeth. <laughs> it's like the weirdest thing yeah. to have to call yeah. out right there. I don't want to tell you what toothbrush <laughs> is. I understand. It's fun. It's like, yeah. Yeah, now we're, you know, we're friends. So, yeah. Uh, But yeah, it's a similar thing where it's it works really well and it's designed really well. And someone took the time to put effort into that. And you've, then you can look at it like mattress companies online, all the stuff you can buy online that's like, very targeted <coughs> to good design. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, the business, for people that don't care about design right now, the, but they do care about money and <laughs> business, <laughs> they, that eventually they're going to catch on to that. Yeah. And they're going to say, well, why is this more successful than this other thing? Well, it's because of design. And I think that, I think it's been a, uh, you know, a trend that's moving that direction. And, and, uh, in the right in the right direction. That might be that's one theory. Okay, good. Probably not the only reason, but maybe we will have uh, other like opinion around yeah, some dreams so Absolutely. Yeah. Um, in terms of like new new trend or new new movement, uh, what about what's your opinion on the, the fact that designers need or are coding more and more? When I say need, it's oh. like we saw a lot of uh, like. Uh, a job um, opening, they say like, okay, you are a product designer, but you need to code, you need to do this from work. Right. Uh, what's your opinion on that? Right, uh, should designers code? Exactly. Yeah, that's a that's, that's a, a hot button issue yeah. right there. <laughs> I have a lot, I have others. <laughs> well, let's let's, let's, let's uh, take a poll, because yeah. this isn't a toothbrush thing. It's, hopefully we get more hands. <laughs> but like, who thinks designers should code, be able to code? Okay. It's 50-50. And then who, who says it doesn't matter? Okay, good. Yeah, so it's pretty split, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, shoot, I was going to use one to go on. Uh, yeah. So, no, <laughs> but I think, uh, it's, I think currently, yes, it's very advantageous to, to have that, that knowledge. I don't think you need to have the same chops that a... Like an engineer. Yeah, I think there can be like this overlap, right? Yeah. And, and, and it can go the other way too, like a developer that knows design to a certain extent is always gonna is always gonna be helpful. Um, I think that the there's a taste is an interesting adds an interesting aspect here because that's something you can't really teach. Mm -hmm. right? you no, know, you can't teach someone good taste. You either have it or you don't. So uh so, should designers code? I, I think the more inf the more knowledge you have, the better, yeah. right? Obviously. Sure. Okay. But I think going in the future, I don't know if that's going to be as much of a of an issue. I, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. But I feel like there there could be this abstraction of code more, where mm -hmm. hopefully, yeah. I think it should be easier to create the things that we have to make on the web. I feel. I mean, it's just it's kind of. Creative. A lot of startups are into this uh, this topic, like trying to to build from blocks, uh, trying to like n without uh, coding knowledge, you yeah. can create your own uh, yeah. project and product. Right, which which I I think if you're a programmer or a developer, you're you're probably like ah that's terrible. Like, yeah. But I think for the general public and trying to 
can we get more people to be able to build mm -hmm. things that are solid uh, with code underneath it solid? You know, I, I, I think we're headed in that direction. There's yeah. all the design tools that are happening. There's a lot of interesting things going on there. Okay. Um, I, yeah, I think that uh, hopefully we'll be coding less in general. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. And talking about the future, what do you see? Um, which is the link for you between this new like uh, technology raising like AI, uh, blockchain, uh, VR, uh, all these new new waves? Uh, what is the link with design? How it will uh, impact the design or the new needs for yeah. the designers? Well, I, I mean, wow, job. it opens up so much, you know, VR or AR and yeah. VR specifically. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a whole host of, of design challenges that are going to come out of that and have. Um, that's all exciting, though. I mean, that's going to be more jobs for people, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is good. Um, and you think, like, the, but, the designer mission will totally switch, or it will be the same, like, background and, and uh, like standard um, missions, but with another layer <laughs> of like new technology stuff? Uh, I don't know. I think, I think, it, I think it's, a game, it's, it's a whole other world, I think. Um, and I, I think there, there is some overlap, obviously, but the, the way we interface with technology is changing so rapidly with VR, even voice, yeah. voice control. Or, mm -hmm. uh, and um, I, it's. It seems like we, there are separate skill sets there to me. Um, like I wouldn't know. I know a little bit about VR just because my son has a, That's not a thing, that, and yeah. it's like incredible. But I, I don't. I wouldn't know the first thing about good VR interface practices, for mm -hmm. instance, right? Yeah. Um, because I just haven't studied it. But I, so there's a little bit of overlap there. I feel like it's a real, it's, it's a, a real, real different, world, yeah. it's a new world and okay. exciting one too. And the one that's going to get, you know, obviously if you're, there, those are all the things you just mentioned there yeah. are like super, super great. If you want to, if you're young and you're got a lot of time to study, like those are, I think those are things to, okay. to hit next. I'm too old. I, <laughs> um, I have some like more. Like personal question, I would like to ask you more about a new uh, adventure, the, the oh, new, yeah, yeah, new project. Yeah, but before yeah. that, uh, I kept one tricky question before we go to something yeah. like uh, uh, smoother. And there is this like ongoing debate whether yeah. designers should aim at solving like a real problem, like designing, yeah. versus the uh, designer who are just like showing off. Uh, Paul Adams, VP of product at uh, at Intercom, said like there is this dribbleization design. Uh, right. I think maybe you're all aware of that. And uh, I remember that one. What is your your thought or your point of view on the on this topic? Do you think there is like this there is two kind of designer or it is like complementary? It's not it's not so separated and the, the fact that maybe dribble help uh, this like trend to, to appear? Yeah I I, I was flat it's uh, always flattered when uh, you know someone writes an article like dribbles ruining the design industry. <laughs> it's kind of fun. It, yeah. it keeps the office uh, nice and, and anyway. So, uh, but I do think. I mean, personally, I think design. It's all it's how you define it, right? So, design to me is like, in general, it, it is like solving problems, right? So it's, you know, it's not just the visual portion of it. It's it's the, how does this work and how does it. What does it say, and how does it work, and how how does this solve a, a problem? And people that are designing that can do that. And then there's then there's art, right? And some people think that those things should are completely mutually exclusive. And I, I don't. I think that they can be one, they can be one and the same, or at least art can uh, can inform yeah. good design and vice versa. Um, it's a really vague political. Uh, answer there, I guess. Yeah. Like, but I, uh, I, I, it's, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's not uh, like two, totally two different person and uh, you can grab it and uh, it was like, because a lot of medium blog posts are, and, and all the, the, the blogger, uh, we can see this, uh, I think it appears like uh, four or five years ago and it's still 
ongoing. It's yeah. uh, everyone oh, is talking dribble, about dribblization. the dribblization. Yeah, so, is, so to touch on that, no, uh, um, I, again, I think it's flattering that like one site could ruin an industry, but but I think um, uh, I just you know my reaction to that particular article was like, wow, that, you're not really that fun, are you? Like you like at a party, you're probably not going to be fun to talk to because I, I think that there's there's. Jeez, did I really say that? <laughs> I, don't, I, mean, I don't remember who wrote it. Hopefully, right here. Uh, but what I mean by that is, is like, not everything has to solve a problem either, yeah. right? Uh, and sometimes it's just fun to yeah. make things, mm -hmm. and that's okay. And I think that on Dribble, sometimes people post, you know, here's here's my take on some uber design uber icon or something yeah. and it's just for fun and yeah. it's just it doesn't have to solve something it yeah. it can help you learn it can help you grow yeah. can um give you some like inspiration and just exactly like, yeah. that's the way i always, i always saw it in that not everything posted yeah. anywhere has to be a complete case study that solves a problem and is you know scientific and all this stuff i just feel like that's it's it's overkill. We yeah. shouldn't dictate what how people are going to yeah. share and what they want to share. Mm -hmm. so. um, yeah, totally. And um, yeah. many designers were saying that, uh, like, it's the plat it's a like a platform. It's a social media, so you use it the way you want. So if you, you yes. want to post this kind of like design yeah. or another one, it's it's up to you. So well, exactly. And I think that we you no know, like guidelines on, on Dribble to say okay, ask to solve a problem yeah. in particular. So. Yep, and I think Dribble, you know. It's easy to look at one page and say, "Ah, Dribble is all this style," and it, mm -hmm. it's much like Twitter. It's like sort of how you use it, who you follow, yeah. and how you use it, yeah. and it's different for different people, sure. you know. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, some people post fun stuff. Some people post things that are actual like, problem-solving yeah. things, and some of them don't. And some of them don't, and yeah. that's fine. Oh. And I, I think it's it is what you make it is what you make of it. Okay, yeah. good. Someone has a, yeah. It's related to what you said actually. Do you remove content from the at all? Oh, do we remove content? Uh, yes. So, so, yeah. Sometimes. I mean, if it's if it's, we have some some rules about some things. Obviously, like if it's, it's graphically so insensitive or you know, like yeah. it, it gets taken down immediately. We also have like a flagging system where if it's flagged a certain number of times it automatically goes away for uh review you know um but you know that's gotten into us in, in us some arguments you know with people i mean politically charged stuff for instance yeah um i can think of one instance where <laughs> this is interesting so somebody created a list you, you can do lists on dribble of lists of designers to follow someone created a list of Trump supporters, <laughs> designers that were Trump supporters, and like it was basically like don't hire and tweeted like don't hire these people, you know, and and I'm gonna be <laughs> delicate about this. Uh, I, mean, I guess I'm in France, right? So, yeah. So, you know, the problem was it's one of the per one of the people on the list contacted support for Dribble and said, look. Uh, I'm on this weird list. I don't know why I'm on it, and I'm not a Trump supporter. And now people are telling me to not to work, not to work with me. So we took down the list, and when we took down the list, you know, it opened up this whole, you know, Dribble supports Trump and hates is racist and Dribble is terrible, and it's like, I mean, I hate Trump, but I, but I don't. <laughs> I don't, uh, is that okay to say here? Probably yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not in way, of course it's okay to say yeah, no. uh, I, You know, you have to kind of separate your personal opinions from something else. The reason we took it down is because this person said, hey, look, I'm on this list, and I'm getting, like, blacklisted for reasons I don't know. So it's, obviously she's using the, she, oops, the person was using the list as a way to, in a way that it wasn't designed to, in sort of a malicious way, um, and uh, that, that that was a tough that was a tough day because we got a lot of flack for 
for taking that list down because it was like it, the, it, it opened up a lot of arguments about well hey you took that now but you didn't take this shot down from five years ago that's you know so it, it, it's it's tough it's a tough tough thing to balance tough thing to manage a community I think it's, and do you try have, to do the right thing always but do you have people on your team like dedicated to this uh We do. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we have a good support team that okay. has to handle a lot of stuff like this. Um, and there's a lot of, you know, things will creep in and we're, you know, but we have a community that's very vigilant and will tell us <laughs> immediately when something's out there that they don't think should be up. So, okay. yeah, it was a good question. Mm -hmm. it's, do you have a, another question? Yeah. I do have a, a tough and weird question about product design. Uh, does someone once gave you an advice on designing uh, that just blew out your mind? Mm. Oh, it's a good, it's a good one. I, I, it should be. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, well, I never met this person, but uh, Paul Rand, famous logo designer, um, He, he designed like the U, the original UPS logo and um, ABC and all, all these sort of iconic logos from the I guess it's the six the 1960s. But anyway, very famous. But he super well known logo designer in the in that world. But his his thing was like I'm only gonna I'm gonna design you one logo, and if you like it, great. If you don't, then hire someone else. And I always thought, I was, first of all, it's kind of a jerk thing to say, but uh, I always thought that was really interesting that here's a person that was one of the most sought after logo designers, and he was able to say that, like, look, I'm not going to give you options, I'm just going to, you're, you're hiring me to do this, uh, I'm going to either take it or, or leave it. I think for me, at the time that I read that, I was, I really, it took me a while to get sort of thick skin working with clients and and thinking that I just had to sort of shove things out to please them and, and not sort of respect my own my own vision of what this thing is. And that's why that's why I was hired, right, to to do this. So I think hearing that was was inspiring in a way. Um, to stick to your guns and um, yeah. That's the first thing that came to mind, but a little random, <laughs> random aside. Yeah, thanks. thanks for the question. Do you have another question, maybe? No? Okay, just one to our uh, last question, and yeah. then we will go uh, straight to the, the food um, and the drinks. Um, <laughs> so you, you are lunching, or you are working on a new yeah. project. It's called Adventure. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yep. Really curious to know more about that. Yeah. Is it like a side project, or are you... Thinking about like moving out from Dribble to dedicate your time. Uh, so yeah, time. I'm glad you asked. Uh, so yeah, adventure. Uh, and I alluded to it a little bit earlier with uh, having a space to just design things, like physical things. I yeah. just wanted that. Um, so that's that's how this started, and and um, as a side project uh, solely, and we'll just yeah. see what happens. And okay. uh, I wanted to I wanted to learn how to make a good enamel pick or a patch or hat or shirt or um, you know any of those things a mug or you know like and I needed a place to do that and what I think the, the idea is that I'll sort of document and share what I've learned by mm -hmm. figuring that stuff out um, it's, it, there's not a lot of talk about where to, this stuff sourced or yeah. how to design those things so it's something it's very different different direction for me But I'm excited about it because I just love making designing things, and okay. it gives me a, an excuse to do that. And you're designing and producing, or just yeah. designing? You yeah, designing you're like and producing. Physically producing. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yep. Yeah. So we did a. Um, I did the first thing. One of the first things I did was an adventure log, which is like a uh, basically a little notebook that you can keep track of your trips. And, yeah. And uh, we worked with a letterpress company local in uh, Massachusetts to, to, to make the whole thing. And that was like a whole process of, you know, deciding on paper and, and uh, there's a pocket in the back. How do we glue that? Like it was just all these different 
design challenges that had nothing to do with the screen, which was kind of nice. It was a nice uh, break. Um, and uh, I hope to, you know, collect that information and, and be able to share it out eventually as well. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Cool. So from my side, I'm, I'm done here. Uh, maybe a last question before we jump out. Yeah. So my, my question is actually, like, how do you manage the time to, like, when actually I was doing all the learning <coughs> when I was in uh, the early days of the web. Yeah. Yep. And all the side projects. Um, so I'm myself, I'm myself a developer, and in full time job, and I'm, I'm like, I don't have some that much time. Like, well, I, I guess I have it, but I don't know how to see it. How, yeah. how do you manage it? How do you see it? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, it's funny because I, I ask the same thing about people that I admire and how they like how do you do all this and so i don't know if i'm capable of answering that because i don't i feel like i don't have a lot of time and it's more like choosing my battles and um um you know i i have two kids too and it's like that takes up a lot of time obviously um but i think i think as i've gotten older it's it's like understanding i feel like becoming wiser as as you get older is is almost like understanding which things to focus on and which things you can let go and not focus on and so maybe that's what's happening is that i'm i'm, I'm coming back around now now that I, I don't have a lot of free time but i do i'm getting better at focusing that time on a specific thing that i want to do um whereas when i was younger i was just sort of like doing everything until something stuck and then would, would focus on that but so that was a really terrible answer but <laughs> in a great place to end on <laughs> exactly yeah uh, maybe another question yeah I think. yeah I was wondering like what in your mind like how, how in your mind uh, Dribble did like change the entire community in hard work like what 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 is in your mind like the main things that you brought to the community yeah um well, it depends on who you are. So, so for some of it's that we ruined the design community, but uh, apart from that. But I think, um, you know, I, I'm, very, I'm very proud of how we've been able to shine a spotlight on, on some talent that, that might not have gotten a spotlight. And I, I feel most proud about that with, with Dribble and just the, the people that I've met through the site. And it's been, it's been amazing. And it's the amount of talent that's out there is incredible and I know some people we hear from some people that they've you know it's made their career because they've gotten a ton of work through Dribble, and that was that was the, the moment that they started you know being able to go freelance or whatever and I, that just that makes me feel good um, and I don't know if we're changing the, the community at all there but we're certainly help hopefully helping you know designers get noticed and, and get hired and I think that's become the core mission of the of the side here. Yeah, thank you. An extra question? No, no one. Well, I think it's time to thanks Dan and uh, give him a, a huge round of applause. Hey. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Wonderful questions. Thanks. Thanks everybody for coming out too. And sorry I was late. Yeah, it's, okay. it's okay. So it's a nice uh, uh, intro. I mean, so to dot uh, CSS. Like I want yeah. to thank all the, the partners of tonight. So yeah. first of all, dot uh, CSS. So the, the, the CSS conference that happened uh, earlier today. Uh, thanks for the intro uh, between Product Stories and you, Dan. Yeah. Uh, Zenly, of course, uh, the venue is like pretty amazing. You did a great job. There is be a video uh, because the video was recorded, so uh, I think we will work on that. And uh, well, food and drink uh, is going to be uh, to be great. And mucho mucho for sure. Uh, they did all again the visual identity. They have some. Uh, project they will uh, showcase to you. We are working on some special stuff uh, because Product Stories is also a product. We are like trying to, to get this meetup uh, growing and, and maturing. Um, 
about the next meetup. So as you know, for now, uh, every month with Laure and Arnaud, we are organizing a meetup. Uh, next one will happen uh, surely not uh, not in November, but maybe early December because of the the, the, uh, the Christmas uh, time off. So it will be at Zenly too. It will be about product design and probably about the mission of the designer in a small startup, like when he's just the only one doing the, the design and what is happening when this, the team is growing and the, the, the company is scaling. Uh, I also want to just a few few last words. Uh, if you don't, please follow us on Twitter. It will help us to grow this community. The idea is first to, to create this meta, but we have like many ideas. And uh, again, if uh, you want to participate to uh, help us like growing the community, follow us on Twitter, but also share it to your network. Uh, Meetup, of course, I think you are all registered, but don't hesitate to, to share it and, uh, and participate to the next, uh, next events. And last one, Medium, uh, we start uh, like a couple of weeks ago to post all the takeaways uh, from the events. So it's just like a short like notes of what we learned during the meetup. It will happen the next, the, the same thing with Dan and what he, he, he told us. So don't hesitate to, to read it, to share it with your community. It will help us a lot. And if you have like any feedbacks, any ideas for us, if you want to participate to helping us like physically uh, uh, during events and, uh, and uh, creating content, I have no ideas. Don't hesitate to ping us on these uh, different uh, channels. And again, uh, an another like, round of applause for Dan because he, he, he was here just for a couple of days, he made it.